Hello Vault Heads, you are watching the self-proclaimed, sarcastically named Captain Keyforge, also known as PJ Broughton of the Steel City Snuffle Gators. This is the video for round two of Coat Series 6. Uh, so today I've got Adam J. Philpot of the London Urchins Dark Urchins team. He is playing a 77 Assass deck uh, from Mass Mutation. Uh, Triple Infernus Grim Reminder. So if that comes out in the right order, you're already looking at you've lost 12 Amber. So that's going to be quite difficult to, to deal with. There's no playing around it. If they come out in the right order, that's just going to happen. Um, but there's some other stuff on there that's really good. Um, Axiom of Grace, Blast from the Past, um, you know, so, so some decent wipes. There's not really anything that will deal with artifacts, but I haven't got that many artifacts in my deck, and nothing that's really oppressive, like to say a proclamation or a heart of the forest or anything like that. So uh, let's see how we get on. Okay, so that's the opening hand. Um, that's not a bad one for going second. Um, you don't particularly, I suppose, want to see doorstep or too much to protect this early, but equally with a with hidden stash, it wouldn't be horrendous seeing one of them because you could bash it away in the archive. Um, but yeah, I mean, I've got the ability there to get rid of five cards out of the six on turn one, so probably worth staying with it, to be fair. Um, Adam's played down a, a champion and a feel. Um, you know I'm going in shadows there because that's what I'm said I'm doing. So played down special delivery, played down by penny, played down whistling darts, played down hidden stash, put in there to take hostages just because you've got to have ready creatures to use it. I'm not thinking I'm going to get much value out of it to be fair. Um, but yeah, that's what we've put in there. Um, I don't particularly like discarding the bad pennies. I like to try and use them. It, it's, you know. It's a bit of a 50-50 whether or not they're, they're going to get bounced back all the time. Um, as you can see there, we've got the two Brodnar. Oh, and then uh, Adam's gone into Saurian's play Sagittarius Gaze. Uh, got rid of the Bad Penny. Played Chant of Hubris. Played Six Day Interest uh, to capture one. Then passed it back to me. Um, yeah, we've got um, three Sanctum. Two Brodnar. Two, so, uh, two shadows so probably going to go in for the, the sanctum and put out the samaros put out the protect the weak on him to give him a bit of protect, you know, armour just make him a bit harder to take off play the take hostages um, not going to spend that on the artifact just because you know it's not going to kill anything um, really could do with trying to get a bit of something permanently with that uh, so I've passed the turn. Now I'm on uh, a three-two-one. Adam's gone for this. He's put down a Dominator Bauble, Snudge, Infernus. That's going to be two Amber lost. And he's uh, what's he paired? Hidden Stash and Take Hostages. Yeah, two Amber lost. Uh, and then he's passed it over to me. Um, the into the fray again you need a ready creature to get something out of that um, equally spirits way kills every creature I love the spirits way uh, against the later sets um, how many creatures are power 3 or higher in mass mutation I've not counted but I will wager something like 90% of them are probably power 3 or higher um, so there we go we've We've reaped with the Sanctum Creature that was down, some arrows. We've played the Spirit's Way to wipe the board. Um, and that's going to be all she wrote from me that turn. Um, but doing okay so far. I mean, I'm, I'm 5 to 2, and I've lost 2 for an Inferno. So, um, and again, comparing the the stats on them, SAS 77 with Triple Inferno Grim Reminder is an absolute banger of a deck. You could happily take that to a Vault Tour and you know, you're not guaranteed to win, but you're certainly thinking, I'm not going to get beat up. Um, mine, it's the second best AOA deck that I own by SAS. I don't think it's bad. I, I actually think it's pretty good and I like it. Um, I just wish, I'll be honest, I wish it had an artifact control. Probably play a lot more if it did. Um, Adam, as you saw, played the Pterodactyl. I've gone into the Brobnar. 
the big question here is do I discard the into the fray or do I try and keep it to get something out of it next turn and I've decided to keep it so as long as something out of that Bromnar lives I'm going to be going into Bromnar again I'm going to be putting down that Shaman and I'm going to be into the fray in something to try and smash that Pterodactyl off the board because um, it's already captured a bit of my amber and as well if it gets unstunned and starts fighting it's an absolute nightmare uh, Adam's gone into Sanctum this time so he's put down shoulder armour onto the pterodactyl, make it harder to kill, but there you go. Uh, put down another shoulder armour um, onto the pterodactyl. I think he's made a slight boo-boo there because he's dealt a damage to it off, off a damage enhancement, but it's, it's easy done. It's not actually hurt it because the armour um, just obviously would have hurt one of my creatures instead. But I don't think it actually would have made a difference to the game. Uh, so... Yeah, um, going to Brobnar and see if we can't take off, take that pterodactyl off before it starts fighting three creatures off a turn every turn when it fights. Um, so yeah, play down the shaman. That'll do for two of its armor. Um, I've miscounted here because I can't see exactly how much armor it's got. And I can't see exactly how much damage it's got. Sometimes the upgrades unfortunately make it hard to see. Um, how much damage is on the creature um, I'll tell you now I get rid of it because I fight into it with Ogo Pogo twice um, but I get the order wrong with Cow Find and Special Delivery and if I'd have got that order right Special Delivery would have purged it rather than Cow Find just killing it so here boom, I should have fought with Cow Find first and then Special Delivered it if it was still around but again I just couldn't see what what power it was, couldn't see the damage that, that was done. Um, so yeah, uh, five to five now, five amber each. Still no keys forged. Um, we've gone into sanctum again. We've got commandeer, and we've got Lord Golgotha. Uh, so Adam's got up to six. I'm on four. As you can see, we've got a little bit of shadows in the hand that should be able to sort that out. So I've played the bad penny this time. Played the nerve blast. That's not going to kill it, but it is going to steal one, take him off check. Play another nerve blast, do some damage, steal another, put me on check. Um, do I play the Ronnie or do I keep it for a bit more value? And as you can see, I've decided to keep it for a bit more value. Try and get the, the double steal out of it. Um, Adam's gone into this uh, pain reaction that's taken out the Ogo Pogo double doom has put the bad penny back in my hand and then discarded doorstep <laughs> so there's seven cards in hand there's only two of them that re I really care about and look at that as always with a crucible one of the ones you want goes. Whenever you watch my videos, you'll see that literally every single time one of my opponents discards a card, there's two cards in my hand I don't want going, and they always manage to hit one of the two that I don't want going, even though it's a one in three chance. Crucible owes me a lot of luck with discarded cards because it just stitches me right up every single time someone discards a card from my hand. So yeah, doorstep went from my hand there. Um... Adam has passed him back to me, so turn 7, as you can see, I did get a key there, which is nice. I've discarded the bad penny, um, there's the Ronnie going down, take him off check, get one for me, put down the Gamgee as well, and then that's going to be passing the turn. I will say this, there's, there's a lot of just nick one in this deck, you know, Nerve Blast, Nerve Blast, Ronnie, it, it does okay. Adam's gone into Sauri and played a Diplomacy. Then he's played a Blast from the Past, which will let him kill one of my creatures. Probably the Gamgee or the Bromnar one. Uh, and he's archived a card. Yes, yeah, so he's gone for the Gamgee, obviously because it's got a good Shadow's ability. Uh, also as well, it thins out your board in terms of there's now one of each. He's stomped the... Uh, Brobnar off that was on there and left me with Ronnie. Obviously didn't want Ronnie going into my deck again, although I suppose there's a chance he could purge him with the Infernuses. There's, there's enough of them. 
I'm looking at that Smith thinking I'd like to get something out of that. But if I put down a gang of chieftain and ready and fight with Ronnie Wristlocks, Ronnie Wristlocks is dead. I haven't got more creatures, I get nothing. So instead I've gone for the Sanctum, I've put down the Vault Keeper, played the Shield of Justice, which isn't going to do a lot, and played the Healing Blast, which isn't going to do a lot. Uh, pass the turn. I will say this, I think Vault Keeper is a very good card. Um, it was especially good in Kota and AOA. Adam's gone into Saurian this time. Play the Pterodactyl. Play Consul Primus. Play Tertiate. And then pass the turn back to me. That Lord Golgotha is stacking Amber up on it. Could really do with getting rid of that one, but this time I am going to get something out of the Smith because I can put down the Cow Fine, then I can ready and fight with Gang of Chieftain, then I can play the Smith. So there's the Cow Fine. Ready and fight with Gang of Chieftain. Probably hit the Pterodactyl because it will keep Cow Fine alive. There we go, and it'll do some damage to Golgotha. And yeah, now we can play the pound and deal two damage and one damage splash. Unfortunately, it's not going to kill either of them, but there we go. And then play the Smith, gain the two, got to check, which is good. Um, but again, there are a lot more cards to come from this deck, aren't there? So turn 10, and it's uh, it's a scrap. Both at one key, I'm in check on six, Adam's on two. And he's gone for this, probably going to see some Infernuses then. Oh, there we go, there's Infernus, so that's another two lost. Any of my teammates will tell you that basically I think more than two Infernuses in the deck is OP. I think the algorithm shouldn't allow more than two. Um, he's purged the doorstep and he's purged the smith. Um, you know, decent decent cards to be purging, especially the doorstep. Um, so yeah, I, I think the algorithm shouldn't allow more than two in a deck. There's no risk involved in an Infernus. It just always works, every time, without fail. Um, no downside, no risk, no nothing. Um, I would, I'd like to see the algorithm stop them at two, or I'd even maybe like to see them errata so you have to purge from your own pile. Um, so you're clearing out your own deck rather than your opponent's. Um, I, I like the card, I think it's really good. I just think it's borderline oppressive playing more than two of them. Um, especially with something like Grim Reminder that could uh, let you play three and then bring all three back. Um, so I've gone for the pound there. Um, I'm looking at fighting with Cow Fine um, to at least get rid of the gold offer. I don't think I've got quite enough to get rid of Pterodactyl as well, have I? It's 12, and he's 5, mm, I do, there we go, yep, got rid of all of them. That gets me a lot of amber back, puts me on 9. Discard the Coward Zinks, obviously I don't particularly want to kill Ronnie. Um, normally I would want to kill Ronnie and put it back in my deck, but I don't think it's worth chains, and I certainly don't think it's worth putting back into my deck when there's so many Infernuses knocking around. So there's another Infernus, so that's going to knock me down from 7 to 2. Uh, sorry, yeah, yeah, knock me down from 9 to 7, taking away another 2. See what Adam's going to purge this time. Uh, he's purged Protect the Weak and Take Hostages. Uh, I've played another Infernus. And that's a shield of justice and the pound gone. That takes me from seven to five. Play the snudge, and there's the third infernus because he grim reminded the last turn and put two of them back in. So yeah, that's um, five infernus plays so far, and uh, that's not even gone into a second deck cycle. Um, and that's going to purge special delivery and pound. 
So yeah, so far we've lost 10 amber off in furnaces. Um, I've gone into Sanctum and played Lion Boutrum. Um, but the blinding light's quite fortunate for me at this time. I've been a bit lucky there to draw that when he's got four creatures down all from the same house. You know, you can't say that's that's not a bit of luck there. Um, at least it's going to prevent him from just reaping for four um, and getting rid of a, a creature or an artifact. So he's gone into Sanctum um, and he's played down front of the eye, Amber Heart and Baldrick the Bald. Um, so, yes, yeah, so let's take a look at this and see what we want to do. I mean, I can drum a note and gang a chieftain and I get two fights out of the drum a note, um, which would kill Baldrick and the Snudge, um, which is probably worth doing. Probably not worth killing the Infernuses because you're only just going to give him chance to cycle them. I mean, he hasn't got Exhume or anything like that, uh, or Arise, but and the Grim Reminder's gone, but again, you'd ideally like him to still be on the board when his deck flips, so that um, they don't get shuffled back in. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm going for the Brognar, just to try and thin the creatures out a little bit. Uh, Ganga Chieftain into Drummanor, into Baldrick, kills him, put Ganga in back into your hand, play him back down again, ready and fight with the Drummanor, take out the... Um, the snudge, there we go, uh, and that obviously drops the drum note. Now on to turn 13. Adam's gone for Sanctum, so if he destroys one of my creatures, the font of the eye will uh, allow me to capture. He's played Burning Glare, um, there are not many mutants in the uh, sets before Mass Mutation. I think it was six creatures per set. I did actually count once. Um, he's played Gizzled Heart Zealot, which will come down ready and enraged, which will allow him to get rid of Ronnie, but I don't think he will. He'll probably go for attacking into Lion Bautrum or Gang of Chieftain, to be fair. So he's warded it with the Amber Heart. And he smacked Ganga Chieftain. Then he's played the Grey Rider. He's put it in between an Inferno, so he's going to be able to unstun an Inferno, thanks to the uh, Ready and Fight ability, which is good play. And he's passed the turn back over to me. So he did only gain one there, which is fortunate. Again, probably if it wasn't for that blinding light, he'd have gained three. Um, discarded a bad penny just because there's so much incidental damage seems to be kicking around at the moment. I'll probably just come back to, to hand. Um, Reap with Ronnie, play the Nerve Blast, hit the Grey Rider. Obviously, you know, if it reaps. It readies and use and fights with a neighbour, so it's just good good shout to to get rid of that one. And then I played Mac the Knife and the Gamji and got to check again. There's no Infernuses to take me off check this time. Maybe he's got a, a capture Saurian creature to, to use. So Kurnus and Octavia comes down. Axian of Grisk um, toward Octavia and then wipe everything without an amber. Uses Font of the Eye to capture one because they're destroying one of my creatures. Takes me off check. Um, but again, that was more about taking me off check because he hasn't advanced his own board state there. Um, we're taking me off. So I've cowards ended those two to get rid of them and get the armor back. Discarded into the fray. Um, so yeah, I'm on seven. Um, Adam's gone for this again. So we played Dark Minion. Played Snudge, done a damage to uh, Snorette. It's Snorette, not Snudge, sorry. So, yeah, done a damage to Snorette. Um, I forged a key. So, yeah, second key's in the pocket now. But again, it's still quite a way to go to get that third. Um, put down the three 
Sanctum Creatures. Mother Norfell, the Vault Keeper, and some arrows. Got TMTP in hand as well. I mean, to be fair, there's a chance Adam has literally never... He's never gone over seven. And he, the reason why he's never gone over seven is probably because of the too much to protect. It's probably threatening him. So he's gone sorry and he's gone Diplomacy. Um, Axiom of Grisk to get rid of everything. Um, and then he's put down a Pterodactyl as well. So he's still got the Snorette. Um, there's a well-timed Axiom of Grisk. Again, I mean, if you can take him off check, it's probably worth doing. Um, I'd really like to kill the Snorette, but obviously uh, the Nerf Blast is only going to deal two damage. Possibly worth killing the Dark Minion, but equally I'd rather just take it and try and put as much damage on the Snorette, so if it even gets a sniff of damage... It's going to be dead, so there we go. Nerve Blast, steal one, two damage on Snorette. Gamgee goes down, which is elusive, so he isn't fighting that off with that board at the moment. Uh, and I'm going to keep to which to protect, um, just because, again, it's such a threat. The moment I play it, he can look at bursting up to 7, 8, 9, whatever he wants, and there's nothing I can do about it. He's gone to this, use the Dominator Ball to remove the stun off the Pterodactyl. Dark Minion to read with Dark Minion. Blade Implosion on the Dark Minion. Blade Font of the Eye to capture one. Onto Snorette, and then he's used Snorette Reaping to move all Snorette's Amber. Uh, into the common supply. Then he's played Grim Reminder to archive the one Sanctum creature he's got in his archive. No, well, it's in his archive now, it was in his discard pile before. Um, obviously, I've got the chain still, but I have got another gang, of, I've got a gang of chieftain that's going to come soon and if I can get those down and use the old gang and all reap for six malarkey I might actually win the game um, gave up the key there with the two much to protect so I didn't think it was worth the one and again the threat of it is just really quite quite a good threat um, Adams forges his second key play Baldrick the Bald Play Champion and Aphiel. Play another Baldrick the Bold. Gizzleheart Zealot. Which he's put into the Drummonaut, but obviously doesn't kill it. Play Commandeer. Captures the amber that we had there. Yeah, at the moment, the, the capturing onto the snorette and the removing it into the common pool is uh, making life a little bit difficult. Really could do with getting rid of that snorette. Although, again, the cow finds with their fight deal two to the neighbours. We'll be able to get rid of the snorette that way. So that's snorette gone with the incidental damage on the neighbours. taunt there is, is, is making life really difficult because you'd, you'd like to start smacking around them Baldrick the Bolds, the bolds but um, the champion and I feel is well placed and, and helping protect them and uh, yeah with the old ability on Baldrick where you gain two when you fight and this could now be all she wrote so Amberheart exalts and wards a creature he then fights into the Drummonar and gains two. The other Baldrick fights and gains two after fighting Ogopogo. And then he puts down Lord Golgotha. 
and yeah, he's on seven. I mean, he got four just from fighting there. Um, I am going to be able to get him down to six with the two which to protect, but I haven't got another nerve blast or a Ronnie or anything like that. Uh, so yeah, that's going to be game over, and Adam's going to take that one. Um, he's played a good game there, not made any particular mistakes to worry about. Um, so um, yeah, well played. And as a team, um, I lost as you saw. Both my other teammates also lost. So as a team, this time we were zero and three. Um, so we are now as a team in the competition zero and two. Um, which is a shame, but, you know, it happens. Um, obviously, we're not doing quite as well as we did in the uh, the last COAT uh, competition. But we will be playing again in round three. Um, and you'll see how I get on there and how we get on as a team. And hopefully the video for that should be up on Sunday next week. Thanks for watching. So feel free to like and subscribe. I love comments and criticism, so please feel free to leave those. I'll hope to see you next time. But until then, may the forge be with you.